Hello, my crafty friends. It's Nancy Vastine. And, yeah, I've been AWOL for a while. Putting on some lip balm so I can talk to you guys. I always should remember that. What I want to do today, I was going through some of, what's this, COPA, COPA deal or COPA or COPA or Child Protective Services thing. I went through a bunch of my videos and I saw, I remembered, I saw one where we were making these uh, gratitude journals out of envelopes and Stacy from Pink Poodle Crafts is the one that was making them and I don't have one to show you because um, I gave all the ones away that I made a couple of years ago or last year, I don't know. So anyway, what I want to do today is make some and I want to show you and tell you I've already done these two. What you need is envelopes, okay? These are number 10 envelopes in the United States. I don't know what they, if you can get them in other countries, but they're business envelopes. And I have used now you can use paints. Last year I used paints, but this year I wanted to use my um, distressed paint uh, inks. So I have used my distressed inks on these, and I don't have in my oxides. I don't have the festive berries yet, but it's on order. And I used, out of the regular Distressed Inks, I used Festive Berries, Fossilized Amber, and Evergreen Boughs out of the Oxides. So, that's what I'm going to use on these. I have my little daubers here, and I also have these brushes. Uh, I sprayed them to get them... Um, clean and they're not quite dry yet but they do a better job than these daubers do of blending the colors I think so I have more of these on order also and my Dollar Tree doesn't carry them but I'm gonna go to DollarTree.com and see how much it costs to get I know you have to buy in bulk so I'd probably have to buy a case of them. And I'll see how much that is for a case of them. Because all I want is really this size and this size. These are the two sizes I like the best. This one I can tolerate. This one, no. Well, it might be good to put some um, pan or pastels on for faces and stuff. I don't know. And then there's another one in between. But anyway, let's get started on making these, this little journal. Now these are going to be in parts because it's going to take a long time. I'm going to do some different um, techniques on these and using different ephemera and stencils and glitter and all kinds of good stuff on these. So it's going to be probably in two or three parts until I finish them because I don't want to be on here for six hours. And if I was live streaming, I would. I don't know if I could last that long for six hours on live stream. Anyway, what you do is you glue this little flap down. Now, you don't want to put too much glue on there because you don't want to glue the inside of this. Let me adjust my camera a little bit. I think it got knocked, knocked around. And I don't want to pull this close to me and not be seen in the, in the, on the, in the frame. So, let us glue this. Just put a little bit of glue on here. And I'm using this Sparkle Art Glitter Adhesive. And 
And you don't want to get it on anywhere that you're going to put inks on because I think that's what's happened on these other ones. I've had glue on here and, and then spread ink on and I get these nice little spots on here. But that's okay. It gives it character and it will survive. It will survive. Okay, so we're going to do some distressing now with our... Now I'm going to try these because I do like these better. But hopefully when I tried it yesterday it had blue ink on it and I got... When I put it in the red I got purple, which I didn't want. This is what I got. This color. I didn't want that. So anyway, here we go. We're going to try this. Okay, now, you can't put red and green together because you'll get brown. So you have to have something in between. Now, you could do all greens. You could do different shades of different hues of greens. You could do different hues of the yellows. And you can do the different hues of the red. But I didn't want them all plain colors. Because I've got a few of them that are done that way. And I'm not so sure I like that. So, anyway. This is what we're going to do. And bless my little heart. I hope I have got these clean enough that I should have something under this that I am <clears throat> I'll get a piece of um, paper yeah printer paper that's what this is piece of printer paper okay so here we go I hate that squeaking on this glass Okay, here we go with the red. And I want to get it pretty dark. And I want to blend it in. And I like these so much better. They co This covers so much area. That, um, yeah, I like it. And I'm going to be blending on top of one another. To blend them in. And let's see. Okay. I've been AWOL because I got really sick with that YouTube uh, crud that was going around. That bronchitis stuff. Yeah. I did. Now, I saw a girl yesterday. Her name's Nancy... Um, and she does cards, and she took double stick tape, wide double stick tape, and put it on her fingers, so she wouldn't get, um, so she wouldn't get her fingerprints in, but I don't have any double stick tape, so I'm going to use this piece of envelope here, and stick my fingers on it, when I get over it that way, so... I don't pick up any other color of ink on my fingers, which I did all day yesterday. But anyway, I, I got the crud. I was feeling really bad, coughing and, you know, the whole nine yards, barking like a seal. Um, I knew it was a virus because I wasn't running a temperature. Okay, so I'm going to turn this and I'm going to go in with the green down here on this side. And so I knew it was viral and I knew if I went to the doctor they weren't going to do anything and I already have inhalers and so I just doctored myself with inhalers and Mucinex and a vaporizer and I 
I could have gotten on here and done videos except for I didn't have any cough drops and I wasn't going to go out to the store and get any. And it's been really cold here. Really cold and rainy. So I knew that if I got on here and started doing this and talking, I'd start coughing and have to stop. And that's not what I wanted to do. So I just babied myself and laid on the couch and watched TV and YouTube videos. Yeah. And then when it got dark, oh, I had to take care of the dogs. Even when you don't feel good and you don't have anybody here to, anybody else to help you, you have to take care of your animals or your children. They're my children, so, um, children need to be fed and, um, they need to go to the bathroom and, you know, all that good stuff. So I had to take care of them. And so that got me up and got me going. And after I would take my Mucinex and do my morning inhaler and take all my other medications, take my pain medications, I would feel better. But um, I just would cough. I just had that nasty cough, and I, I, I didn't want, I didn't want to get on here and spread it to you guys, you know. So I stayed away, and I missed everybody. But I was doing stuff. I, I also did some crafting. Okay, now I'm gonna lay that on there Let's put my fingers on there because i'm gonna go in with the fossilized amber and it kind of it's not yellow it it kind of looks gold to me it it's real bright on here but it's not that bright it's it's a little darker than that and this is the only one i could find that looked gold because um Mr. Tim Holtz, if you're listening, you need to get one that's gold and silver. Distress inks, yes, gold and silver. For Christmas, I know you've got festive berries and you've got all the other greens, but you need you need gold and silver. If you're listening, yeah, if you're listening, which I'm sure you're not. I'm sure you're not watching my videos. Maybe you are. I don't know. But I, I'm using your distress stuff. I'm using your product. So, listen. Gold and silver. Distressed inks. Distressed oxide inks. Distressed oxide sprays in gold and silver. You just need to have some metallic ones. For us people who like bling bling for Christmas. Listen, listen. So anyway, so much for that. And that's about all I have to tell you guys. So now I can just be quiet, I guess. And do my thing. Do my thing here. My thing. Um, news on moving out to Utah. Um, I did take Stacy's advice. And found a realtor. But they are also, believe it or not, charging, wanting you to still have if you, okay, if you, if your rent is like 1300 a month, they want you in your income, they want you to make three times that amount. So in other words, they want you to make like $48,000, $50,000 a year. Well, 
you know, who makes that kind of money? I guess lawyers and stuff, but they don't want to live in a townhouse. I'm going to go back in with a little more red. Fetsy berries. On this side. Blend it in a little bit here more. Put my paper on here and put my fingers on there. And move up. I move my chair back a little bit. That's what happens. Ooh, I hope that's not putting a line. It is. Dang it. Didn't want a line in there. Well, anyway, so I did find rent.com. And they were helping me out. And um, they found me a townhouse. A three-bedroom townhouse. Um, I don't know how many square feet. It's a lot of square feet. It's big. And that's what I want. And um, now I'm going to turn this over and we're going to do the same thing on the back side except for I'm going to flip it and on the green side I'm going to put red over here. And that's what I want because I would like, what I, I want to have a master bedroom, a guest room, and a craft room. But if I can't get into a three bedroom, then I will settle for a two bedroom and not have a guest room. So if I have any guests come, they'll have to sleep on an air mattress in the living room or, you know, like we did in the olden days, we doubled up. And my mom, my mom and dad, whenever we had company come, my mom and dad gave up their bed for the company. And they, they slept. Uh, we had, see that? That had glue. That had glue right there. Now, the ink won't go over that. But that's okay. Because it will get covered up. And yeah, they used and uh, used to give up their bed for my aunts and uncles or whoever was visiting. And they had a hideaway sleeper couch. Yeah, they did have them back in the day. And they were comfortable. And they were really heavy. And my mom had a couch that was red. She loved red. So she had a couch that was red and it was a hide a bed. And I'll never forget that couch because my brother and I had rheumatic fever. See, there was glue. So you got to be careful with your glue. My brother and I had rheumatic fever together and we were bedridden and we were. We had our own beds and our own rooms, but during the day where mom needed to be with us and um, doctor us and stuff, she put us in that hide a bed. And you know, then we she we were there together to get our medicine and yada 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 yada. Okay, so I can't put. I'm gonna have to put yellow next to the red. So that's the direction I'm going. So yellow, 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 or gold, or whatever. Fossilized amber goes next. So I have really good and really sad memories of that couch. But it lasted forever. Yeah. And um, people took care of their stuff back in the day. Well, everything was built better back in the day. And, you know, it was expensive back in the day. In order to get a good, a good piece of furniture. And anyway, we had, we were in that red couch. Laying on that red couch. And my mom and dad would give up their room for company. 
And I always thought that's what you did. You know, whenever you had people come to stay with you, you gave up your bed and you found somewhere else to sleep. Oh no, when I got married, that was not gonna happen. My husband was like, no way am I giving up my bed for people. They can sleep on the floor on a air mattress. Yeah, and that's, or they could sleep on a hide -a bed And that's where we put them. Because <laughs> he wasn't gonna give up his water bed. No, 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 no. Plus he didn't want, he didn't want people in his bedroom. For some reason, that was his sanctuary and he did not want people in his bedroom. So, that's that. Anyway, so where was I? I don't remember what I was even talking about. The red couch, the hide a bed, people coming. Oh, my apartment, my townhouse. You can't call them apartment because if you call them an apartment, they'll put you in a, they'll find you places that are like apartment buildings that are stacked on top of each other where you have three or four floors and they're all stacked up on top of each other. And I've had my share. I've lived in those. I've had my share of those. And I don't want to go back to those. Um, we lived in that kind in the military. In housing. And I've lived in that kind in college. And I lived in that kind in when we were temporary duty in Maryland. And I'm not. I, I, no, I don't want to go back there. After you've lived in a house and um, even after when I divorced, got a divorce, I was low income and I went to an apartment complex, of course, where low income people lived and drug addicts and it was, it was terrible. It was really terrible. But when I was back out there this summer, I went and looked at those apartments and man, they have come in and repainted them and rebuilt them and gave everybody a big old shed outside, but there's still two levels, two and three levels. And uh, no, with a balcony, a shared balcony. Uh, no, I'm not gonna do that. Maybe I'll have to, but I'll go into a um, retirement community before I'll do that. But anyway, so there we go. Now we have these. But now, in order for me to do anything else on them, I have got to seal these oxide inks in. And I'm going to set these over here out of my way. I'll remember to put them away. I'm going to set these out of my way and I will clean them later. And what I have to do is I have my trusty little box and I have to put a mask on and I have to open the windows because it's too cold to go outside to do this. And I have to turn my kitchen stove fan on and exhaust fan and I have to put them in my box and spray them with the fixative so I'm gonna go and do that and then I will be back and we will um go to our next step so I will see you in just a few minutes after I get these sprayed and dried hi I'm back okay now we've got them sprayed and sealed and dried and now we're going to do some stamping on them. And I'm going to use Arch Archival ink and I, I kind of want it muted a little bit so I don't want it in your face, you know. So I'm using this uh, script stamp and I'm going to put a little bit of this carnation red on it 
And I don't want it, you know, everywhere. I just want a little bit here and there. Just, you know, muted like that. And then on the other side, just a tiny bit. Because I don't want it all in your face. Okay, let's do the second one here. These are really juicy. And we'll flip it over. And okay. Let's do the third one. Like I said, I don't want a lot on here. There's different techniques that I'm going to be doing. I don't want a lot. I just want some. Okay, that's good enough. Now I want to put, where's my little paper? I want to stamp some snowflakes on here. So I've got some different snowflakes. Don't ask me where they came from. I do not know. So kind of wanted to do them in like a gold, goldy yellow. And I guess I could do them in that distress, but then I can't use my other stuff on it. Let's see what color I have in these. That's not going to be so much in your face. This one is chrome yellow, chrome yellow. This is sunflower. That might, that's a little orange. Let's try a little bit of that. If I don't like it, oh well. Let's try a little snowflake. Oh yeah, that'll look okay. And I don't know what, how come I get ink. These little ink pads, they get all over me. And then I have ink where I don't want it. Okay, let's try a few more of these. Like I said, I just want these in, in the background. Just so that you know they're there, but you don't know they're there. All right, let's change color. Still a little bit of the green. Oh, that's too dark. I don't want that dark. I don't want it that dark. Mm. 
the other green is a vivid chartreuse i'm gonna try that these will probably get covered up but i just didn't want it you know that stark of a color on there well not much better but all right let's turn it over and do a few more I'm afraid the red is going to be too. All right, let's do the yellow. Okay, let's do this one. And I'm going to change my snowflake. I don't want him to be all, ooh, I don't want him to be all the same. So we're going to use this one in the yellow. I'm going to call it gold. You can't see them, but they're there. I just want to have a background on here. Can you see them, kind of? See them on there? They're there. They are there. I promise you they are there. Oh, and I'm stamping on a piece of foam. It just, just makes it easier. change to the green now that one you can really see and that's okay if you see a few like I said they're going to get covered up but you'll know that they're there. I think I have enough red on here with that script that I don't want to put any more red. got a headache coming on from I think from spraying that fixative but it was pretty well 
um, gone, you know, it, it didn't linger. I had the windows open and the fan going and Boy, you can see that green. Okay, let's do the last one. Then after we do this, we're going to put it together and then that'll be all for part one. Then you'll have to come back for part two and see what we do there. And I don't know if we'll have part three or not. We will see. And these were made, I don't know how many of you remember or knew people, but these were designed and made by Stacy Evans. And what they were for was uh, to be made so that they would have flat embellishments on them so that they could be something pretty that you could mail out in the mail and it not cost you an arm and a leg to mail it. So, okie dokie, we got the stamping down, I think. We might need these again. I wanted to do this little bitty one just on my finger. This is a lawn farm. I didn't think I had any snowflake stamps, but I went hunting and I found my snowflake stamps and I was so glad to find them. Because usually I don't do Christmas, but this year I'm feeling not, I'm feeling not really in the, I am feeling the spirit of Christmas, but not enough to go really frou-frou over it. I'm not putting up a tree or anything like that because I'm packing and um, I don't have a place to put a tree. Yeah, so I'm gonna put these away because they're gonna be in my way if I don't put them away. How is that for a rhyme and a reason? And I'm going to move my stamps. Now, these are bigger stamps, and I don't know if I'll use them or not, but I'm going to move them over here, get them out of my way. 
Okay, now what we are going to do is we are going to fold them. This is where I get into trouble. No, first of all, we have to cut the top. Now, you need to find out what your orientation is. Um, if you want all of the flaps to be inside, then you want to cut. But if you want your flaps to be inside, and you want a different orientation with the colors, then you need to cut this way. See what I'm saying? So, and you don't want to cut too much off. So this one, I, and these are going to be pockets. So this one, I'm just going, now you can use decorative scissors. I don't like the decorative scissors, especially with paint, because when you cut it, you get the decoration, and then it's got the white line, and I didn't want to have to go back in there and um, stamp, you know, fill in the ink, the ink, um, so... I'm just barely, barely cutting off just a simple sliver. Barely, barely, barely. Just like that. And there is your opening, okay? So I know that. And you want your pockets to be on the upside. So you can stick things in them this way. You don't want them on that, going that way or, or everything will fall out. So that, and then I want this one this way. And the reason I'm doing it this way and different way is because of the orientation of how I want my colors. If you're painting them and you're just smearing paint all over, it probably doesn't matter, but I didn't want to have them folded and be all the, because I did it in stripes and an ombre look, I didn't want them to all be the same color and I'll show you what I mean okay so check and make sure that they're all you got it all open now there's some right here that's not glued make sure you get that glued down and you don't want a ton of glue like I just put on there just make sure all your flaps are glued down that one is not Oh my goodness, I put a ton of glue in that. It's a good thing I put fixative on there. Now I hope I didn't glue my pocket shut. Okay, make sure everything's glued down. Before you put it together, or you'll be sad. Okay, I think we are good. Oh my gosh, I hate that squeaking on here. Ah, probably don't like this glass mat as, thought of, as much as I thought I did. Okay, so... All of our things are cut. Okay, so how do I... <clears throat> I want this orientation like that. And this one like that. No, I don't because I don't want this flap to be on 
the outside. I want it to be on the inside. So I have different colors, you see? Okie dokie. So this is the first one. Now, what are you going to do? You're going to take this bottom part and you're going to come up here and fold it probably about, um, I have a grid here on my craft mat. That's a half inch. So I'm going to fold it, hold it there and bring this bottom part up to that that line and get it as straight as you can and then fold and you probably want a bone folder I remember oh I can't remember a couple of years ago it was on HLN I don't know this, I can't remember the lady's name, but they were advertising uh, bone folders and stuff like that. And she called this thing a boner. <laughs> Everybody was like, oh my gosh, she called it a boner. Okay, so, all right, so the next one, I kind of did this wrong, but it's okay. So the next one you want to lay on here, you want that one to be up and put that one about a half an inch. And then this one's going to fold up. Now, do I have my pocket right? Yeah. Okay, this one's going to fold up and it's going to come up and meet that one okay now we're getting it and we're going to use our bone folder to crease it so now we got all reds together but you know what i can't help it it's what it is it is what it is So I'll put the green one up here and I'll find my little line and I'll put this one about a half an inch like there, there, somewhere. And this one's going to come up and fold and this one's going to be bigger than a half an inch but that's the way it is. Okay, now you have your little book, and it's a waterfall book. Now, you see, but now we've got two. Now you can have it this orientation where it's going decorated so it's going up like that. Or you can have it this orientation and decorate it so it's opening like this. But I think I want to, before I do anything else, there's a place that's not glued. I think I wanted to do my other technique before I um, put this together because I what I want to do is I want to spray some sparkly stuff on it through a stencil and I thought I would do it on each one of these except for I think I'm going to undo them and do it now on them because if I don't then I'm not you know I'm not gonna get it up in here where I want it so let's do this okay I'm rolling I'm pushing up my sleeves I've got dilution shimmer spray now I tested these out on a paper on a paper and I don't I think 
I think, I don't know. I think this, I don't know. One of these is a dilution spray, shimmer spray. And I have another one. And one of these is a shimmer spray that is a frost. And one is a shimmer spray that is a sparkle. And I think I like the sparkle one the best. So I don't think I'm gonna use the dilution, so you always wanna lay it down because those micas will get up in there. And this is the sparkle shimmer. Okay, so I'm going to put my little paper up here and with my envelope and I'm going to get my stencil. This is the reason I wanted the stamping of the uh, snowflakes underneath because I'm going to take this stencil and I'm going to make sure that I don't get this spray it where I get a square. Now these are put out by Image, I think, I don't know. Some girl, yeah, they're put out by Image. Some girl was using them and um, she, I wanted some so she had it in her description box and so I ordered some. If I can find that, um, that link, I will put it in my description box. So, I am going to clean this lid out because I didn't do that. And that will get into your nozzle. Okay, so here I go. I'm going to spritz, 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 spritz. Lift it up. And I'm going to turn it over on that paper. And that's going to dry. And when it dries, it will be all shimmery and shiny. And I'm going to do it over here. I don't want to get the square. And turn it over on my paper. And I'm going to do it on the end. Now you gotta we gotta realize that I'm not a frou-frou girl. So this is the first time I have ever done this like this. So bear with me, please, and don't write me nasty comments. Tell me I'm not doing it right because I'm doing it the only way I know how, okay? All right, so now I'm going to dry this. Can you see the sparkles? I can see the sparkles. Can you see the sparkles? I see the snowflakes. Can you see the snowflakes? So we are going to decorate these up, but that's going to be another day because this video getting a little long so I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to do it on the other two and then I'm going to come back you don't need to see me do all this because you saw me do it once so I'm going to do the same thing on all three of them and I will be back okay <clears throat> I am back and they are all sprayed and they're all folded and now what we're going to do is we need to find the middle 
you need to open them up and find the middle. And now we are going to poke two holes. Oh, first of all, I have this thing of seam binding that I ordered a hundred years ago. And it's white. And it's called Snug or Hug Snug Seam Binding. And this is what everybody bought. Then I took my oxide ink and I smeared it on my little mat here, my glass, and sprayed some water on it and dyed me a piece of this that will match my book. So now I have told you that and this will last you forever unless you use it forever. Use it a lot, but there's a hundred yards on here. And you can see I haven't used very much of it. But like I said, I don't do very much frou-frou stuff. So it's lasted me for a hundred years or maybe a hundred and five. I don't know. So now I have this bead reamer tool and I found this the other day, but I couldn't find my awl. And you need something. Now I hope this works because this bead reamer, I did not know, is like a file. And um, it had a little hook, a little nibby nib on the end of this and I sanded it down. We are going to try this. Oh, I mean, you need a book or phone book or some kind of soft something to lay your book in. I bought these paperback books when before Dollar Tree was Dollar Tree and when it was deals. And Gills was kind of like another dollar dollar store, but it they weren't everything was not just a dollar. Okay, so you want to make sure you have them all um, together where you bent where you folded them. Okay, so I'm gonna poke a hole. Oh, um, about there. Is that about a half an inch in from the top? through all of them. Then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to poke two holes through all of them. Maybe. And I don't know what that little sander does, but Maybe it sands the hole out a little bit. I don't know. So then you get rid of your book. The one you poked a hole in. And I have a needle here. And I hope these holes are going to be big enough. I don't like to have very big holes. And I lost my other needle that had a bigger eye on it. So this one is going to be maybe a little bit difficult to thread. Even though it's got a pretty big eye. You see that? got a pretty big eye on it so we'll see if I can thread this seam binding because my 68 year old eyes are not doing as well as they should but I got it in there now this is about I don't know about 14 and a half inches 15 inches maybe and I'm hoping it's going to be enough but uh, you want to go through here? No, let's see. You want to go? Yeah, I want to go through the front into that hole. Uh, pull it through just like that. Then you're going to go down here. And you're going to do the same thing and pull it through. Oh. Oh. My 
holes aren't big enough for this eye to go through. Okay, now you got it through. And now you're going to kind of even it up as best you can. And then you're going to come up here and even it up a little more. Like that. You can take your needle out now and try not to lose it. I don't know where it went to. And I'm going to put it back in where it belongs. So I won't lose it again. Lose, you lose your needle, then you don't have any to sew little books up with. And you're sad. Okay. I got that done. I'm going to put this back in. Put things away as you use them, and then you don't have a big mess. Okay, now we are going to tie this in a bow. If I can do this with ten fingers and ten toes, and because you need it to, you need about six fingers to tie a bow. I don't know how to do the rabbit ears, and that's not tight enough. See. But I usually go three times around. My mom taught me that. And yeah, it's a little bit bigger, but it stays tighter. Maybe, but what's this kind of... You don't want it too tight to tear your holes. But, you know, tight enough to hold your... Hold it tight. I don't know. It's not tight enough still, but it's going to do. It's going to do. It, that's going to have to do. So now we have a cute little bow with some cute little, you can use whatever you want to tie your book closed with. But I like seam binding. It's about the only thing i found that I have a bunch of other stuff. And so now we have a cute little book. So now we can decorate it so it opens up this way. Oh my gosh. You guys. I put all my pockets the wrong way. Can there anything else go wrong? Can anything else go wrong? Well, my book's going to have to open like this. So that I don't know what to do now because my things are, my bow's at the bottom, and I told you guys not to do that. I don't know if I can go back and, how am I going to fix it? Let's see if I can fix it. This is not fun. I had it right the first time before I took it apart. All right. Well, now they're all on the top, but my holes are at the bottom. So, I don't know, guys, if I can fix it or not. My holes will be in the wrong place. It 
needs to be like this. Oh my goodness. So if I Okay, that's at the top, but my holes are going to be wrong. How do I fix it, guys? should have folded it the other way. They should have been folded like this way. Like here. one here and then this one and then this one I don't know what to do. I can't figure it out. I don't want to start all over with another one. I'm just going to put it back together the way it was and um, hope for the best. My holes will all be on the bottom. I mean, my pockets will be on the bottom. Blooper! This is a blooper! Blooper, guys. Blooper. I'm going to cry. I am going to cry. I am totally going to cry. Don't bark, Biles. Bell, don't bark. Molly, don't bark. Yep, they're all on the bottom. Oh well, I'm I am gonna go with it. I I am just gonna go with it, and whatever goes in these pockets will. Um, just have to stay in there because um because I'm a goofball and and I did it wrong because I'm a goofball and I'll figure it out probably on the next one if I ever make a next one don't know if I ever will or not yeah I wanted to make a few of them And I'm getting a late start on them. 
But I wanted him to do it with you guys because because I did. Probably should have gone back and watched Stacy's video. This is the back, and this is the front, and there's your pockets. All on the wrong side. Because, I mean, dumbass. This is not for kids. This show is not for kids, and I usually don't say those kind of words, and I shouldn't have said that. Okay. So, my book is going to be, I could orientate it like this. That's what I'll do. It'll just open up on the wrong side. Instead of opening up like uh, this, like Americans do, it'll be the wrong way. Oh well. I am not going to stew and worry about it because I just might redo this whole thing tonight after and come back tomorrow with part two and it'll be all done the right way. I don't think so. Oh, that's not tight enough. I need to get some food in me. I'm getting a little shaky. Well, anyway, it's cute. And it could be cuter if it was done correct. That just makes me sad. Makes me sad, makes me sad, makes me sad. Okay, guys, this is going to be part one, and I will be back with part two. And thanks to all for watching, and hang on for part two of this little book we are making, this gratitude book. Okay.